Hey, how's it going? This is Dylan with Dylan Talks Tone and DylanPickups.com and uh, today we wanted to talk a little bit more about the Kemper uh, that we've got behind me here. Um, I'm using the Kemper Powerhead um, with the foot controller and I'm playing it through a 212 guitar cabinet and that's really what we want to talk about today. Uh, one of the things that we see a lot on the social media sites and on our YouTube channel and questions being asked is or the statement being made, you know, I, I spent a few minutes with it and it's just not the sound for me. It doesn't sound real. Um, I've watched a bunch of videos on it and it doesn't sound real enough. And the other thing that we hear a lot of is I need to feel the amp, you know, like um, that's the thing is the feel. I need to feel the amp. The part of the thing and the misconception that happens with the Kemper is when you're listening to it on YouTube, you are hearing the compression of whatever recording device was used. Most of the time, they're not very good quality. And even when they are, there is a digital compression that happens with that. Um, then when you upload it to YouTube, that's a whole nother level of compression. And then if you're listening to it with earbuds on an iPhone or an iPad or something like that, um, you're just not getting the full picture, okay? I'm just gonna tell you that. You're just not getting the full picture. So all these videos, that's why, and I've said this before and I'll say it again, you'll never see me do one of these comparison videos, real versus fake and all that stuff, because real versus digital, because it's really, really difficult to record that stuff and give you a very real um, representation of what I am hearing and feeling in the room. Um, that's why we say if you want to try something digital, whether it be the AX8 or the Helix or the Kemper, and this video really applies to all three of those things, um, this part of it anyway, that's the thing. You have to go do it. Now, the other thing that comes up is, well, it, doesn't, it just doesn't sound real to me. Something you have to remember is this is basically a snapshot of an amp at a particular setting that has been mic'd, okay? So when you are listening to it, and, and most of the most people, like a lot of people that are going to be playing in churches and stuff, are going to be using in-ear monitors um, because they don't have a cabinet on stage. Um, there's a lot of guys that play live that don't have cabinets on stage anymore. They're just using a head unit like this, and they're going straight to the house and with in-ear monitors or monitor full-range monitors to sit in front of them. Um, it's not going to sound like a real amp. But a real amp doesn't sound like a real amp when you're listening to a mic signal in your ears anyway. So that's the thing. You are putting another piece in between the air moving in the room and uh, in your hands, okay? But it's not fair to say that the Kemper or the AX8 or the Helix don't do this properly because um, you're listening to it in monitors anyway. Um, you're taking that you're taking that direct feel of the air moving right here when I'm playing a real amp out of it. The thing about a Kemper powerhead especially or you know not a powerhead if you get a power amp is then running an actual guitar speaker. Um, so I have a 212 here plugged straight in just like a normal head in a cabinet and so now I can play just like a normal guitar. Okay, so it's just like a normal amp, normal, normal playing. And you can't tell, and you'll say, well, I'm listening to it on YouTube, and it does not sound like it sounds and feels in the room. This sounds incredible in the room. Now, there's a couple of factors, though, to make that sound proper. Most of these devices, well, the AX8, the Helix, and the Kemper, all have like impulse response stuff built in so that you can have a cabinet simulator so that you don't need a cabinet. So what you're playing is a, basically a mic'd signal with a simulated cabinet through house speakers or through in-ear monitors or through studio monitors, something like that, okay? Now that is a sound, and it sounds great, but it sounds like a mic cabinet sort of situation. When you're playing live, or if you're playing just in the room like I'm playing right now, um, you can shut off those cabinet simulators and you can go straight to a guitar cabinet. 
or you can go straight to a full range, full response speaker. And I'll get into what the difference is in a minute. Playing with an actual cabinet in the room is fantastic because it sounds real, it feels real, and the dynamics are all there. And I think a lot of people don't realize that when you play this way, um, those dynamics are there. So even like, even like hum and noise um, are, are there. So, you know, getting all the, that weird stuff going on is all there and it's real. It's not uh, a simulated thing. It's, it feels and sounds exactly right. Feedback, standing in front of the, the cabinet, um, doing all that stuff is real when you're standing in front of a normal cabinet. Now the downside to playing with a guitar cabinet through a Kemper or um, with another amplifier, an AX8 or a Helix, is that if you're using a uh, profile from let's say an AC30 and you are using a really American voiced speaker in your cabinet, it's going to color it a little bit. Um, I have I have really like British voiced speakers in here and it's because I play a lot of Marshall sounds. Thing is I do play a Fender clean, but I found a, some speakers that I like that will do both, okay? But it's never really, really accurate to what the guy that made the profile intended. The way you do that is play through a full response, full range cabinet. Basically, it's pretty much uh, like a monitor, like a stage monitor. Um, they make some guitar cabinet more, you know, constructed ones to use for that. Uh, but then you can turn on your cabinet simulation impulse responses and then you will be able to have uh, more accurate across all of the different profiles for that sound. That being said, either way, you still have a speaker with you in the room, okay? If you don't have a speaker with you in the room, you are going to feel a little bit disconnected. But that makes sense. If you play with a real amp through an ISO cabinet, and you know, ISO cab and mic it and have in-ear monitor signal, you're still gonna have that same disconnection. So it's not really fair to blame it on the AX8 or the Helix or the Kemper. Um, when you put that disconnection between you and the air moving in the room, it's gonna be there no matter what. The cool part is these things do a fantastic job of working within that and give you that real dynamic feel anyway. And I think a lot of people um, get lost in how the thing should be used. Uh, I think they get disappointed with, well, it doesn't sound real. Well, could it be because you're listening to it in headphones or you're listening to it on YouTube or you are playing it in the room, but you're playing it through in-ear monitors and the simulation, the cab sims aren't correct and all that stuff's not, it's all got to kind of be matched up and it takes a, a fair amount of fiddling and understanding where your pieces are going to lock in uh, for all that to work. In my next video, I'm going to basically take a basic guitar tone and I'm going to show you how easy it is to actually build a fundamental guitar tone and have something that you really, really dig, a full, more or less pedal board full of stuff with just a couple of buttons. So in our next video, I'm gonna show you that. But before we get into that, I wanted to talk about uh, the really the fundamental ways to use this and how a lot of people complain, like I said, about that disconnection, but it really comes down to how are you gonna use it? And remember that if you even do it with a real amp, you're still gonna have that disconnection if you play it through you know, in-ears or um, you know, any kind of mic'd and then reprocessed signal um, other than just the air moving in the room. The cool part about it is I can go ahead and send signal out to the house and still have this thing sitting behind me at a lower volume and I can still feel it and, and have all that interaction that I want. Because I can send, shoot, I could send it in ears, I could send it to the cabinet behind me and to the house. I could do all of that stuff and still retain that awesome feel 
and keep maybe a little bit lower stage volume, but still have all that dynamic going around me. It's capable of doing all of that stuff. So that's the thing. Don't sell it short um, because the options are in there to make it go and to make it work how you want. My name is Dylan. This is Dylan Pickups and Dylan Talks Tone. We're going to go ahead and show you uh, how we can build some cool tones with this thing.